guys, we'll go ahead and get started here. So welcome back, those of us who have joined us for our previous sessions. Uh, welcome back to uh, today's sessions. Thank you for joining us. We're continuing on that content. Uh, for those of us who are joining us for the first time, welcome, welcome. Uh, these are going to be uh, sort of the um, a couple of sessions that we prepared for you, uh, hosted by Data Meeting. My name being Andrew, of course. A couple of uh, sessions here that we prepared for you guys in order to explore the use cases uh, regarding or surrounding uh, preparing tax related data, uh, utilizing Alteryx here. Uh, and uh, starting off, just as a recap, with our previous two weeks, right? First week, we we're generally looking at ways that we can utilize Alteryx in order to clean up our data, just in a generalized use case, not really necessarily putting it within the lens of tax related specific. Uh, use case. However, we did move on to week two in which we started to expand our horizons out when utilizing Alteryx. Um, and now that we've made it to week three, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a bit more of an advanced use case. So we kind of uh, started building our skill set piecemeal here. So week one, of course, just looking at Alteryx in general. Week two, looking at very basic use cases regarding tax related uh, contents. And now moving on into week three, we have a much more advanced use case. Wouldn't necessarily say that the data set is gonna be more advanced, but rather the usage of Alteryx is gonna be uh, a bit more uh, of, of a higher level usage of Alteryx rather than what we uh, previously saw with just our basic inputs and outputs and basic data preparation here. So having said that, we can go ahead and take absolutely a look, just jumping right into things. You guys know how I like to, handle these sessions really just jumping right into the all tricks side of things. Don't want to include too much fluff at the very beginning. So taking a look at our, what I'll call our initial data set here. What you'll notice is I'm not actually using an input tool. Uh, well, I, I won't be using an input tool here, but we'll get to that when we get to that. In general, this is going to be our initial starting points, right? We have a bunch of different tabs containing a bunch of different data. Now the structure itself, quite the same. So we do have our, uh, our two header uh, values here in row one, uh, or row one cell, or cell, I, I should say cell A1 and A2. We have our various ones going down at the very bottom. Uh, and in general, the, the sh overall structure stays the same. It, we do have some differences in the monthly values themselves. So the actual dollar amounts, that's to be expected here. Uh, but in general, this is going to be our sort of balance sheet here that we have uh, for us. And it does go down all the way into December just to show you guys that uh, data here. So we have uh, account description values such as turnover, cost of sales, accounting fees, insurance, legal fees, et cetera, et cetera. And each month will have a specific value that gets associated with it. Now, we do have the inclusion of these dashes, which could uh, have all tricks sort of have a, a harder time reading this data in, in terms of making sure that it's read, read it in as a, uh, as a number or read in as a number. But you can absolutely take a look at that here in just a couple of seconds. Uh, so go ahead, commit this to memory. You don't necessarily need to memorize it. We are gonna see it here in just a second. But having said that, uh, this is gonna be the data set that we're gonna be starting off with. Now I'll go ahead and close that out. Move directly into Alteryx here. Uh, what we're essentially going to do is we're going to attempt to combine that data utilizing the uh, smallest amount of tools or the, the minimum required amount of tools uh, needed. Maybe some smarter usages of tools that we've previously seen. Uh, maybe some usage of tools that you may have not seen. It's those intermediate tools. We're going to uh, generally uh, combine these tools together in order to be able to produce a single output that contains all of our monthly uh, data. So we're essentially going to be creating sort of like a, you can almost think of it as a historical month to month balanced, uh, balanced sheet here. So we're going to be able to see that all in one location as opposed to looking at that data in one Excel file, but across multiple Excel tabs. Now, of course, as we're going through this content, feel free to absolutely ask in the Q&A section here uh, any questions. We do have some lovely data meaning uh, associates here, some of my peers and colleagues on the call to answer any questions as we're going through. So don't feel like you're going to be interrupting the flow of the uh, session at all. 
uh, we'll have other individuals answering questions as I go through the content. So uh, we can absolutely keep moving forward here. Also, one last thing that before we get into uh, jumping into all tricks, uh, we will have these sessions recorded. As I mentioned before, we are going to be posting them. Uh, those may have a lag time just so that we can get some editing through. Uh, but having said that, be on the lookout. If you do need to dip out early, no worries. We can absolutely send you off a link to our uh, next uh, or our previously recorded webinars here. But having said that, this is going to be our starting workbook or work uh, flow that I've created for us. Now notice this does connect up to an Excel file, but I could have absolutely just created a text input field. The reason being is because uh, this isn't actually going to contain the data that we saw before. So whereas we saw before, for example, our if I move over, right, our trial balance sample data set, no more. Instead, uh, we are inputting in that Excel file. However, notice that the data is not necessarily going to be what we're expecting, right? The data itself is being presented with just the tab values, right? The sheet names. Uh, we're seeing January 2016, February 2016, March 2016, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down to December 2016. Now, this is not a mistake. This is something that I actually want to do. Now, uh, if you do a quick Google on uh, the usage of Alteryx regarding uh, inputting multiple Excel sheets, you'll find many different solutions. Right? This is something that people have asked for quite frequently. Uh, and a bunch, uh, and while those uh, solutions vary wildly in the, the tools that you use, right, so the end goal is to be able to uh, input all sheets at once. Now you can find various macros, various pre-built workflows that people have shared. And those workflows will have their certain caveats. Those macros will have their certain caveats in terms of how they like to be configured. You can configure them incorrectly. Uh, now, this is just going to be one of those ways that I'm going to show you right now, but do not by any means uh, take away that this is the only way, right? Alteryx is much like a math problem. There's many ways to get to a proposed solution. So I'm just going to show you guys one method. And uh, if we do have time, you'll actually be able to see me go through a couple of different approaches that you can think about as we're going through these workflows here. But having said that, uh, notice that I've connected up to this Excel file. So the main things to look, to look at and, the, and to think about, oh, my Zoom, it's not, uh, not running here. So let me go ahead and run that. So wrong screen. Notice that all I've done here is I've connected up to my trial balance sample, right? That file that we saw earlier that contained all of those values that we actually want. Now, the only difference here that I've made is I've set this to list of sheet names as the output as opposed to whatever the default is. I believe the default is just going to be, if we see, select a sheet, right? We're not selecting a specific sheet. We're importing only the list of sheet names here. Now, that looks really weird. Maybe ask yourself, why are we doing that? Reason being is because we're going to actually run this through a neat nifty macro called the dynamic input macro. Now, this is a macro that's offered right out of the box. So if you guys don't necessarily know where that's located, no worries. As we saw on day one, the search for tools, help and resources search bar at the very top right hand corner is going to be a fantastic way to be able to find those lesser used uh, macros here. So if I go ahead, Notice that there is the dynamic input tool. It looks like almost like a, a more dynamic or a more macro version of our uh, regular standard input tool, right? It's just going to be gray with those nice frills in the, uh, the circle here. But having said that, I'm going to go ahead and drag that into the view. Absolutely making sure that it's connected up to the original uh, input tool here. Now, the main difference here is that I'm going to be reading through a list of data sources. So what this dynamic input tool does is you can provide it any text value, whether that be a directory of where to find a file, whether that be a list of sheet names, as we see in this case, or a value that's created through a formula tool. What Alteryx will do is it will grab that text value, it will grab that value that you're providing the dynamic input, and it will search through a uh, specified location here. So it allows you to absolutely bring in various types of, of data sources. Now, first thing that I'm going to go ahead and do, let me go ahead and zoom in, clicking on edits, I'm going to connect up to a file or database. This is going to be similar to uh, the inputs that you see regularly. So if you're 
attempting to uh, input a the, the balance sample just as a regular sheet, you could absolutely do that here. Uh, and I'll go ahead and uh, drag and drop this file here for us. So trial balance sample, drag that in. Yep, we'll just hit OK. Doesn't really necessarily matter which sheet it is. That's fine. And Danny hitting OK. And there we go. We have our trial balance sample Excel file. Now, in the field, what we're going to go ahead and do, very simply select the only field that we have available to us, sheet names. And this is going to allow us to input all those individual different pieces of information. Now, what you'll see here is that this is not going to be enough, even though we're going to be bringing in all of our information. We're going to absolutely have to clean it as we saw before. Now, the only thing that we've done here, again, guys, just as a really quick recap, is we've hit edit. We've located our child balance sample, right? That, own, that single Excel file that contains all of our information. We have our sheet names field uh, that we've selected, and that'll allow us to read in all of those individual sheets based off of the sheet names that we provided Alteryx. So we have our sheet names being provided with the text input. We load that into the dynamic inputs, and if we hit run, the blue wonderful run button here in the upper right hand corner. Let's see what we get as our output here, guys. So taking a look at the outputs, we have a wonderful output that contains over 400 records. And it looks like we do have all of our information here. Now notice there are going to be a couple of things we do need to fix here. So we have F2, F3, F4, F5. Not very uh, intuitive uh, names for our fields. And if we also double check here, uh, it may look like that we have perhaps 2.5, about 2.4, 2.5% of our data not okay. We have almost 5% of our data as null going in this column. So we may want to take a look at that. And more obviously, or most obviously, we still have those header values here. Now, I'll tell you right now, this is not uh, client-related information. This is not information that we've sort of ripped out from some client's uh, repository. This is something that was sourced from ExcelSkills.com. You could absolutely find the source file if you were so inclined. Uh, and there, with that comes with these header values that uh, we saw earlier in the Excel file. So we're going to absolutely need to clean these up as well. So we're going to need to find some kind of way to be able to parse through this data set and say, hey, where we see these nulls or maybe perhaps where we see trial balance data or uh, see www.excelskills.com. Remove these values. These values aren't necessarily needed. We can absolutely go on with our day. Cool, 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 cool. Now, I do also want to make a quick change here. So this is gonna start us off. This is basically gonna be all the information that we need at this point sourced from the data set. However, a neat trick that I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys is if you guys do have like a historical set, a historical data set that you're trying to put together, you have months uh, information or quarterly information or what have you so this date level information separated apart into various different data sources what you can actually do is you can tell alterix to outputs uh, the file name as a field and what this will allow you to do is it'll allow you to get all of those info pieces of information here uh, in order to uh, be able to parse through that here so I'm not actually going to go ahead and do that here in this specific data source input, but I'm going to go ahead and do that in the input data source templates. I'm going to output field a uh, file name as field, and I'm going to select this to be full path. Now what this will do is it will actually output for us. Uh, you'll see here in just a second, hitting OK and hitting run, right? the physical path uh, where that file is saved on the data set or on your, on your hard drive or wherever, your data server or what have you. Now what this allows you to do is if you take a very, very close look, because we actually have the month name inside of the field itself or the file name, we can parse through this. We can conceivably clean up this data set such that we are now getting uh, just that monthly value. It'll allow us to absolutely create a more historical data set so we actually get to see the, the monthly values here as opposed to just, uh, I, I guess you could guess, uh, but 
uh, we're not in the business of guessing here. So having said that, we'll go ahead and move on. Now, this is where we can branch off into two different paths, or I guess you could say multiple different paths. We're going to go ahead and show you two, uh, depending on the time. Uh, you do have multiple ways to be able to parse through this data set and be able to parse through and grab that uh, monthly value. Now, the method I'm going to show you guys is going to be the text columns. It's going to probably going to be the simplest. I'm going to go ahead and drag that from the favorites shelf. If you guys changed your favorite shelf, absolutely, you can go ahead and click on the parse uh, shelf here, the parse tool category, and that will get you to uh, the columns to split tool. Now, I'm going to go ahead and split up my file name field. Right? I'm going to use the delimiter, the pipe. So we've switched over our column to split to file name. The delimiter is a pipe. We're going to split to our columns. I'm going to increase the number of columns. We're going to split to four. We'll see here why in just a second. And having said that, I'm going to go ahead and run this and we can see what we get out as an output. So clicking on this output, I'll go ahead and scroll all the way to the right. And if we go ahead and scroll all the way there, notice that we have all of our months separated out in their individual monthly values beautifully in their own column. Now, the reason why we needed to split it out into four different individual outputs is because uh, we did use the pipe delimiter here, which is going to uh, give us three different outputs because there are three different pipes. If you wanted to, you could absolutely get a bit fancier and instead in the delimiters here, it puts three pipes. However, that is going to be completely up to you, however you decide to do things. If you wanted to make things a bit more dynamic to capture more values, maybe having one pipe might be a bit more flexible for you guys. Although, uh, if you do have a file name structure that is going to be extremely consistent and you can identify its consistency and attest to it, you can absolutely include those three pipes there and that'll be just as fine. Now, having said that, we can absolutely go ahead and go through the next step over, which is to uh, remove any vestigial columns that we don't necessarily need anymore. So I'll go ahead and drag my select tool here as we saw on day uh, on week one, week two, right? That select tool is going to allow us to deselect columns to change data types, which we'll come back to here. And a neat trick that uh, I had one of my mentors teach me is that you don't actually need to deselect these individually one by one. You can absolutely select all of the highlighted fields, which will reselect these field values, or you could go the opposite direction, which is to deselect those highlighted fields. So if you're working with upwards of, sometimes I've seen like 50 different columns that I needed to uncheck, right? That's kind of a pain. So just going through manually identifying which columns to deselect, highlighting them, and then hitting that uh, deselect highlighted fields, much better, much easier of a process. Now I'll go ahead and go through and change that month year value to the actual name month year. And I'll go ahead and leave everything as is right now. We're going to go ahead and take baby steps. We may perhaps need to rename these F2 to F5 values. And we may also need to change the string uh, type to maybe perhaps a number type like a decimal, a float, an integer, how, uh, what have you, right? Because we may want to run some math off of these fields, but we will get to that here when we get to that. Having said that, I do like to run things. And if you guys see me run a workflow, uh, I mentioned this before, but for those of us who are joining new, right? So if you guys see me run a workflow, but not click on the blue uh, run button here in the right hand corner, I'm actually using the keyboard shortcut control plus R. Uh, and that's just uh, what I'm used to. I'll try to go ahead and run using the button as much as possible, but sometimes uh, the, the training kicks in and uh, I, I hit control plus R. So uh, that's just uh, what's going on there. But having said that, let's go ahead and take a really quick preview. Always going through our best practices here. A quick preview of our data set. So it does look like we have uh, all of those vestigial columns um, now taken out, right? File name, file name one through three. Don't necessarily need those. Now, this is where uh, the input of the data set is going to be extremely important, right? Because we are attempting to fix this data set or clean up this data set in the minimum required tools as possible, we're actually going to go ahead and go through, and this is where that intermediate portion of Alteryx comes in. Uh, we're going to need to have an understanding of how Alteryx brings in data sets, uh, as well as how Alteryx will uh, handle that and uh, load that into the tool itself. So having said that, if we take a look at each individual month year, notice that the first two rows 
within each month year combination is always going to have the trial balance data and always going to have the excelskills.com data set. So notice as we switch over from April 2016, oh, you go ahead and zoom in here, right? April 2016, notice that the first two rows are always going to be null. Now, I will say, because I've done this webinar many times before, that this is going to be true for every single month year combination. But for those of us who are following on at home, right, if you wanted to manually confirm on your own end, absolutely, feel free to do so. Uh, but that is going to be an assumption we're working off of. Now, uh, assumption can be a scary word, right? In most cases, you want to know exactly what the inputs and outputs are going to be. However, in certain scenarios, it's going to be much more performance to run off of these certain assumptions, these low hanging uh, assumptions, what I like to call them, right? Low impact, right? You could absolutely build in checks later in the workflow to double check to make sure that the, uh, your assumptions held true. But at the end of the day, we can go ahead and go bit rogue here and uh, teeter that line of the, that gray line of best practices here. Now, what I mean is I'm going to go ahead and drag in the sample tool. Right. What this allows us to do is it allows us to not only tell Alteryx to take a, an abbreviated sample of our data set, but we can also tell Alteryx utilizing this tool to skip a certain set of rows. So for example, if I take a look here, I can absolutely tell Alteryx to skip the first n rows. Uh, and I can absolutely just have Alteryx skip those first two rows. So n being the number of rows we want to skip, so I'll type in two, but that is not going to be enough. Right, because if I go ahead and hit run here, notice some of us uh, eagle eyed participants may have noticed that yes, the first two rows of our entire data set has been removed. But if we go against, uh, go to August, for example, notice that those two rows were not removed as well. So we're going to need to tell Alteryx in some kind of fashion to identify hey, for each new month, your combination, I'm going to need you to remove those first two rows. Thankfully, that's completely already built into the tool itself. So if I go ahead and click on month year, underneath the group by column, notice that it is optional. However, what this allows us to do is we're essentially going to be grouping by or grouping our sample methodology. So we're going to be saying for each new month year combination, we're going to skip those first n rows here. We're going to hit run. We're going to get a beautiful output that allows us to see all of those rows missing now. So if I go to August, notice that August doesn't have anything, December doesn't have anything, et cetera, et cetera. And I also didn't need to do any sorting. That was just based off of my prior knowledge of how Alteryx loads in data. And we can go ahead and move on to our next section here. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at our data sets, Notice that technically our field rows, our field identifiers are going to be found in the first record of our data set. So notice uh, if you go, go ahead and scroll to the all the way top, right? Account description is actually not a value of F2, but rather F2 is the account descriptions column. F3 is not a, or basis is not a value of F3, but rather F3 is basis, et cetera, et cetera, right? Month is at five. So how do we actually get Alteryx to be able to identify this first row of data without having to actually manually identify it, that uh, base F3 is basis? Because if you notice, I actually included a select tool. So uh, in most circumstances, right, making changes, multiple changes using this single select tool is probably going to be more performant. However, while that may be true, this is going to be a static change. Excuse me. Uh, this is going to be a static change. So if I go ahead and change F3 to basis, if I change F4 to uh, opening, F5 to month, notice that that's always going to be the fact. Let's say that I, I load in a different data set, or let's say I give this workload to a colleague and they're now loading in different sets of Excel files, right? That would always change F5 to the value of month, to the field name of month. That may not always be the case. So how do we get Alteryx to be a bit more dynamic? Leaving the dynamic header value here inside of our search, I'm actually going to go ahead and bring in the dynamic rename tool. So thankfully, Alteryx already even comes out of the box with this tool here that we're going to use. So if I go ahead and drag that into the view, 
right? I'm going to go ahead and make sure that L is going to be the input anchor that we're connecting up to. I like to call them carrots, but with, regardless of whether or not you call it an input carrot or an input anchor, completely up to you. But just make sure that it's connected up to the top one, to the green one, to the one that has the L identifier with it. And with that, we can absolutely go ahead and select business name, F2, F3, F4, F5. And what's actually awesome about this dynamic rename, we're not actually gonna be utilizing the formula mode, but I actually use the formula mode quite frequently. So if you wanna prepend, if you wanna uh, append uh, various values, if you wanted to append you know, a, uh, a sorted month value onto your uh, field name, you can absolutely do so utilizing the formula tool. I highly recommend utilizing it. it saved me much many hours of waiting for things to run, waiting for things to actually uh, be created and developed. It's a very fantastic way of renaming your fields. However, I'm going to go ahead and click on the drop down and instead I'm going to select to take field names from first row of data. Right? Because as we saw before, as we were, uh, as we identified, making sure that we also deselect month year, as we identified before, inside of our output for our uh, sample tool. Notice that row one, account number, account description, basis, opening month, uh, not including month year. Actually, we're going to leave month year the same, but business name all the way to F5, right? Notice that we do have those values stuck inside of our first row of information. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is hitting run. We're absolutely going to see a very minimal change, but a very necessary change. Notice that month, opening, basis, account description, and account number are all correctly labeled. And that was probably the least manual, but most dynamic way of changing our values. Now we can go ahead and move on to uh, filtering any data sets that, does not that we don't necessarily need. So if I go ahead and let's see here. Let's see, we can go ahead and go through and add in our filtering values here. So if I go ahead and drag in my filter to the view, I can absolutely select month does not equal month the text value month. Now, the reason why we're doing this is we do need to capture certain values and make sure that they do not flow through into our data set. So for those of us, uh, I like to reference you guys as our eagle eyed uh, viewers here. If I go ahead and run this, notice that at the very bottom here, curiously, we have 11 false records, which means that we actually do have a couple of rows that were uh, that contain the value of month. Now, these are just going to be quite simply header values that were included based off of our process of adding in all of those uh, 12 different uh, sheets worth of data. So we're just going to tell Alteryx to remove that here. We don't necessarily need it. And then we're going to go ahead and update our month field here to be numeric. Now, in order to do so, we could absolutely go to our select tool dragging that in, making sure that month is a, in this case, I'm gonna select it as a double. A double is just simply a value or a field type that can accept decimals. And the reason why I did it here, I changed the double assignment here as opposed to the initial uh, select tool, right? This is gonna be uh, essentially an exercise of testing your ability to see into the future of a, of a workflow, to be able to plan ahead, right? Because I could absolutely change this month uh, value. So I believe it's F5. I could absolutely change that to a, a decimal, right? I wouldn't necessarily get the uh, month value, but I could absolutely just simply right, change that value to month here and then rename. However, what would uh, be difficult to remove would be all of these other month field types that we see here as well. So notice that we get month for every single row repeating in our data sets. Uh, so it would be much harder to capture those month text values because uh, it may go to a null if we set the, uh, the field type a bit earlier uh, than uh, necessary. 
So that's why we're including it here. At the end of the day, we're going to get to the proposed end goal that we want in order to be able to contain all of these disparate pieces of information in one location here. And then absolutely, I'll go ahead and run this. And what you'll see is we'll have a much more cleaned up data set that actually contains numbers that we can actually load into Excel, Tableau, Click, Power BI, whatever tool that you're looking at, you can absolutely utilize that here. Now, if you guys are loading it into a tool such as Tableau, Click, Power BI, or a end data in uh, visualization software for your analytics, I highly recommend leaving it in this structure here with your month values going down, right? Whereas it's a little bit less readable for the end user, right? If a human were to read this data set as is, right? It's a bit hard for humans to read data in this structure, which is why we're gonna go a, a next step further here in just a second. But if your intent is to load this data set into some kind of end data visualization tool, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you leave it in this structure. It is gonna be much easier for that tool to read and to uh, input and load this data versus what you're about to see here. Now, if you guys are gonna be emailing this to, for example, let's say your CFO or whoever cares of this data, right? You absolutely do want to change the structure to make it easier for them to read. Uh, so in order to do so, what I'm actually gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to transform this data sets, right? I'm gonna utilize the cross tab tool to move all of our month values from the rows to now uh, the columns here. And we'll just, see what that looks like here in just a second. So if I go ahead and click and drag my cross tab tool into the view, I'm going to group by the account number, account description, and basis fields. This is gonna allow me to make sure that I'm not generating multiple columns worth of information or multiple rows worth of information that I'm not attending to. Now for the column headers, I'm gonna go ahead and select the month year value, right? Cause I'm gonna be able to basically see the month year, April, 2016, August, 2016, July, et cetera, et cetera. I'm gonna be able to see those inside of my column headers and inside of the column cells themselves, the values, right? I'm gonna go ahead and select month, right? Those dollar values. Now in the events that we do need to aggregate our values, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the sum. However, based off of the way that we've sort of structured our uh, configuration for a cross tab tool. We won't necessarily need a uh, tango with any summing or aggregation or what have you. So if I go ahead and hit run, we do get to see a much more beautiful data sets with 38 records, 38 rows, but notice we do get to see all of our values going across the columns here, as opposed to be prior to loading in, we're as our values were going into the rows. And that is going to bring us to the end of this path of our workflow. Now, it doesn't look like we have too many uh, questions here, but having said that, I'll go ahead and show you guys because we do have a bit of time here before we get into any questions. Uh, the other way of being able to parse through our data set and cleaning it up, this is going to require some background knowledge on regular expressions. However, thankfully, uh, there's actually a really great tool mastery. So Alteryx has a set a, of articles that they've written, that uh, people in the community have written, uh, that relates to, true to the name, essentially mastering various tools. And they have a very fantastic one written uh, about regular expressions. Now, regular expressions are thing, uh, is a concept that's uh, ubiquitous across multiple different uh, softwares. It is its own, um, almost you can think of it as a language, not necessarily tied to Alteryx, uh, but I actually learned how to use uh, and read and write regular expressions utilizing that tool mastery. So it's not just for Alteryx related uh, purposes, uh, you can absolutely utilize that knowledge that you find there in that article for any other purpose as well, utilizing regular expressions. But having said that, I'm going to go ahead and go to the parse category. And what you'll see is you'll see a tool called regex. This is going to be your regular expression tool. It allows you to parse your data set utilizing a set of wildcards, a set of expressions here. So if I go ahead and click and drag that into uh, the dynamic inputs tool, right? This is where that second branch is going to uh, come off of. We're essentially going to be mimicking these two tools here, but with a different set of tools. So what I'll go ahead and do, I'll go ahead and zoom in here and make it a bit easier for you guys to see. I'm going to parse through the file name 
data sets or file name column here. Now the regular expression that we're essentially gonna be utilizing uh, in order to uh, give you guys an idea of what a regular expression is, is essentially allows you to set a, uh, a set of identifiers, a string of identifiers. And what Altix will do is it will go through those uh, identifiers and essentially pick out and parse through the uh, field values that match that set of identifiers here. So notice that we can have a new line. So if we wanted to parse new lines and be able to identify when a new line appeared, we could absolutely click on new line here. And that would be our identifier uh, for us. Now, because this can accept multiple uh, strings or multiple identifiers in one string here, I have one that's already pre-built out. And uh, what you can actually see here is we have one chunk of our uh, identifier here, right? A period, asterisk, question mark. I won't necessarily go into the intricacies of what a regular expression is. It's a quite large uh, subject here. But notice that we do have our three pipe delimiters. Now, if we take a look, close look at our previous values here, right? Notice that we had those pipe delimiters. Let me go ahead and span out our file name. Our pipe delimiters separating our first half of our uh, our string or our file name that we don't necessarily care about. And then the second half of our string, which was April 2016, right, is essentially what we see here in our identifiers for our regular expression, those three pipe delimiters. And then we have what we actually want to output here, and close in those parentheses with that period and asterisk. So what I'll go ahead and do is click on the output method as parse. So what we're essentially going to be telling Alteryx to do is when that's a field value, uh, essentially, when that field value equals that's a regular expression string, I should say, we're gonna go ahead and output just that chunk of data that we care about here. So if I go ahead and zoom out, hitting control R, let's see if my string was correct. And if all goes well, thankfully we have April 2016 here in our regex out one. You can absolutely rename that utilizing a select tool. And this is really where we're gonna see the fact that uh, Altix truly is like a math problem. You could absolutely utilize as many tools, as many uh, different functions as you want, uh, and you'll be able to get the same outputs depending on how smartly you use them. So notice that regex out. If I go ahead and rename that, click on Control R, all right? That is actually gonna be the same exact output that we're eventually gonna get to versus our text to columns. Now with our text to columns tool, of course, we do need to remove a couple of more uh, fields here. Whereas before, all we need to remove is a uh, file name here. Uh, absolutely. And then we'll be able to get to that exact output that we care about. I wouldn't necessarily one is easier than the other because if your knowledge of regex isn't that strong, that's completely fine. Altex gives you other options. However, if you have a very solid understanding of uh, regular expression, you can absolutely utilize that. That'll help you bridge that gap. It'll help you to say, hey, I don't want to have to learn the text to columns tool. I'll just utilize what I know and be able to bridge that gap within Alteryx. And that's why uh, I highly recommend um, using Alteryx in general because it's uh, a fantastic tool that allows you to utilize your specific specialties, which you are known to be good at using, and be able to implement that within the tool itself. But having said that, I'll go ahead, open up the floor for any questions here. We don't have any questions. I'll go ahead and end today's session for today. Now, of course, uh, really quick notes. We are going to have our final and last uh, session, our fourth session next week. If you guys have missed any of our previous sessions, no worries. We're going to go ahead and post a, I believe it's a YouTube link uh, or a uh, LinkedIn link uh, to those previous sessions so that you guys can sort of see the progression of uh, where we started and where we eventually got to. Uh, but next Tuesday at the same time, 12 o'clock, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our final use case, a bit more of an advanced uh, parsing, advanced uh, look at how we can uh, implement Alteryx in relation to our tax uh, data. So I'll give it to 12. 45 uh, for any questions. If you don't have any questions, absolutely. I'll go ahead and give you guys some time back into your day here, but I'll go ahead and be quiet here. Give you guys the floor for right now. I'll be moderating the Q and A as well as the chats.
Cool. So does it look like we have too many uh, questions? No worries. Feel free to bring any questions that you guys may have uh, into the next session. Be more than happy to answer your questions then. Uh, but I do also want to give you guys some information here. So if you guys want to uh, contact me directly, absolutely. I love hearing from you guys. So go ahead and email me at andrew.kim.datameaning.com. Of course, this webinar, again, was hosted by uh, Data Meaning. Uh, but if you guys do want to uh, ask me questions directly, absolutely love to hear from you guys. Feel free to drop us a line or you can go ahead and contact us more generally at datameaning.com. And that'll give you guys uh, an avenue or a line of communication that you can open up with us as well. Having said that, hope you guys are staying safe. Hope you guys continue to stay safe amid all of that COVID craziness. Uh, but I do hope to see you guys here again uh, next week. Tell you all your friends uh, this is going to be the cool place to be at 12 o'clock for any ultra related news. And I'll see you guys next week at the same place, same time for our next and final installment in our Alteryx tax session. So having said that, hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you guys real soon. Thanks.